Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Richmond Ballet in real time. I'm thrilled and excited. We have the one and only epic choreographer extraordinaire, Mr. Val Canaparoli, joining us today in this epic setting of Bow Out, one of his ballets. Welcome. Uh, in the past. I love that. <laughs> Look at that. We have Kristen Gallagher, Phil Skaggs, yes. Tiffany Smith, and Pedro Zelai. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Where are you in there? You should have been in there. I know. Well, you know, I'll come later. Um, <laughs> Val, this past weekend would have marked your um, premiere of your new ballet that you're going to be doing here right. with Richmond. Um, this would have been your ninth creation, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think this would have I been. I think so. It's hard. I, I, I get asked those things a lot and I, the statistics in me don't don't work out so i just I'm go i'm pretty sure i did the math and i'm a mathematician so yeah. i'm pretty sure this is your ninth creation on rich ballet um and it would have premiered this week and sadly right. our performances have been postponed tell us a little bit about um how you've handled the sudden loss of that creation and also how you're handling all of the pauses on your other world premieres going on right now Right. What? Because um, I don't take it as a loss right now because the subject matter was so appropriate for now. What's going on in the world? What's going on? Hence the title. And all this does is add new ammunition and new material for me. And I've been even working on that to even uh, uh, upgrade, so to speak, the message. And it's going to include what we're going through right now. And it's just it works out in the theme of what we were all trying to accomplish. So I'm, I'm taking it as a positive. You've been setting ballets at Richmond Ballet since the 80s. How did you originally come to Richmond Ballet? Well, that was Stoner Winslet. I, at one point, um, I was like into marketing myself. I wasn't really ready to be marketing the way I did, but I remember, um, doing, I did a ballet called Narcisse here at San Francisco Ballet. And I had, I have a lot, I have a lot of good supporters that really helped me from all different categories. And this graphic artist said, you need to promote yourself. I'm going to design a poster for it. And let's, let's make all these posters and let's send them out. I bought tubes and that's when, you know, computers weren't mm -hmm. mailings, get a whole line, lineup of people doing mailing with these, uh, these uh, posters in these tubes and sent it to directors all over the world, which I was cheeky of me at the time. But Stoner remembered that poster. Very she cool. She remembered that. It was years after that that she asked me, but she remembered. And I believe it was um, Jerry... Uh, uh, Jerry Schwender? Yes, and uh, um, they both, uh, his wife. Leslie time. Peck. Leslie, they yeah. were dancing with you, and they danced at Pacific Northwest Ballet, and they worked in ballets of mine, they also brought up my name. So it is like, you just never know. I love that the poster, the poster sold Stoner, I love oh, it. The poster, it, it didn't hold immediate results, but mm -hmm. then people, it started, and I, I realized back then the importance of promoting yourself. Marketing, yes. When I'm mentoring other carpers, I say, just make sure you, people know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be secretive, don't be shy. You're not, don't go, now you can do, the age of the computer and all this you can send uh to directors what you're doing please come you don't have to necessarily force them i need a job you know are you interested right. just make sure everybody knows what you're doing constantly that's great advice so Very nice. I learned that so long ago mm -hmm. um, but that's that's really how that happened and then um i think the first piece was it street songs um i have the first piece was obad Oh, boy. oh, you're right. That was done for Israel, Israel Valley. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow. And I sent That's the video great. tape to Stoner and she said, yeah, come, let's, let's do it. And, and then after that, you did, um, I believe it was Street Songs. Yes, yeah. that was the next one. But it's just so, but those are, that's a ballet's done in the 80s. It's like, throwback. <laughs> no, no, Street Songs was the first ballet I ever did. So that was, um, something that I think is really unique is that you have been working with Richmond Ballet since the 80s. How mm -hmm. have you seen our company grow and evolve? Well, it's grown immensely 
even in its notoriety, I mean, everyone knows Richmond Valley, and I'm your biggest bullhorn out there, Richmond mm -hmm. Valley. I'm always, I always say it's one of my favorite companies to dance, uh, dance with, to choreograph for. Having to dance with us too. I haven't been asked to dance yet, thank God. <laughs> you guys. Um, but to, never say never. So I think uh, Stoner, and just, she's brilliant in how she's running that company. And I just had so much admiration for her and keeping the company afloat and really, and bringing in dancers that want to work and really want to explore and do new things. And it's always been, uh, the great to work with choreographically the dancers that has never changed to me that's been this constant throughout um maybe technically better now I don't know but I, I I'm not noticing oh my gosh so much better now than it was but I mean every company is so that's you know the yeah. technique has been you know amazing right now what dancers can do so that's has been notable but it's just the the uh the way it's run and you walk in that building and it's such a positive uh, space and it's never not been that way. And uh, that's why I love going there. I just know it's the support, the support mm -hmm. system is on every level, every category. And I find Definitely. that. Yeah. Um, just looking at this photo reminds me, I remember obviously growing up in the school, I watched a lot of your ballets from stage as a child aspiring to want to become a dancer. And so I used to watch Kristen- Same age, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. But you know, um, I used to watch Kristen Gallagher um, in all of your ballets, loved her. She was so versatile. I remember learning so much from her, um, just ha the type of dancer I wanted to be. And what I noticed was that she could adapt to any style. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right, that sort of, um, that positivity that gets passed down from generation of dancer to generation, sort of like, this is how we do things at Richmond Ballet. And I think yeah. that's really helped. I'm glad that you see that as a choreographer. Oh, uh, absolutely. It's, it's like going home. It's amazing. So it's like, it's perfect atmosphere to create new work. Great. Yeah. As a choreographer, what do you look for um, in a dancer? Like when you walk in a room and you've got 25 dancers, but you only need five, what right. is it that sticks out to you? I, I started late, so I, I'm aware of being a little bit as a dancer in a in a, a class, being in the back of the room, because I was constantly learning, or you know, I wasn't the star or whatever. Mm -hmm. I so I really I look at those dancers. I go all the way to the back sometimes. I don't look at the rank and stuff. And I I'm really good at spotting that dancer even in class. And sometimes uh, in the back of the room, I might find that, wow, that quality. Uh, uh, the, you can tell the love of dance. And there's something about that. And it's hard to describe. I, uh, I always tell this story that, um, and I learned from this, uh, Jerome Robbins, which an odd story, because I was just in the company, just barely. And I know I wasn't that great technically, but I was hired mostly to do character roles, because I did them well, because I, I studied acting before, you know, music before I studied dance. But I was, I was brought in the company within even a little over a year after being in the school, just a year and a little of training and being in the back of class. And I remember Jerome Robbins coming in. It was the first ballet that San Francisco Ballet was going to do of Jerome Robbins. And he and his entourage were going to come in and watch class. And the teacher at the time, I remember being in the back, and there was an intimidated because he's an intimidating person. I mean, you go, oh my gosh, Jerome Robbins. And he, I remember, I mean, imagine this, you're in class and you have the combinations across the floor diagonally and the teacher's saying, and, and saying your name, which is my name, Val, you don't do this combination in front of everybody. So imagine being 20, almost in tears, like oh, how humiliating. Mm -hmm. Guess who ended up with the lead role? <gasps> Val saw what was going on, and I was great. And it was a ballet called Moves, and I had with the, one of the best roles in it, much to the shock of everybody. And I learned from that. You, you know, you look at mm -hmm. obviously uh, there's something in about me that he he's picky. He's really mm -hmm. picky that he really liked, and I'll never forget that. So I uh, when I look at class and stuff, I want to give people a chance. Mm -hmm. You know. I love that story, Val. That is awesome. 
it's crazy. I think everyone was so shocked. I even have pictures of that ballet. I mean, and it's like, all right. So yeah. I'll, I'll forget that. that, the underdog, the one mm -hmm. that give this person a chance. I love the dancers that I picked that are underdogs all over the world. And even directors saying, no, 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 he or she in the attitude problem or this. And, but I see something in it and then I prove them wrong and then they get promoted. That's when I go, wow, that's more so than the success of the ballet. Wow, that person was going to be fired. Now they're promoted. Now they're solos. Now they're a principal. I love that. So I take that in consideration. Yes, I do too. Okay, now's my favorite time in our show when we're going to do a fun little petite allegro round. Okay. And I'm going to um, just fire some questions at you and you're on the clock. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm really bad at Jeopardy, so we'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, Beach or mountains? Mountains. Okay. Favorite thing about San Francisco? Uh, the, the diversity. <laughs> favorite ballet that you've ever created? The what? The... Your favorite ballet that you've oh, ever created? I don't know. That's, that's a crazy one. I've always... It's like, picking, it's like picking your favorite child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll skip that one. Monopoly versus Clue. I would say Monopoly because okay. I have no idea what Clue is. Oh, really? Yeah. Clue with the with the um, candlestick and the library. Oh boy, I'm gonna send you a copy of that game, though. <laughs> um, the fa your favorite ballet that you've ever performed. Uh, the favorite ballet, favorite ballet, it was a ballet that Michael Smeon did, it's called Songs of Mahler, and I did, an, a, I was able to do The Last Pas de Deux, which was amazing, and Melancholic in Four Temperament. Thank you. Good <laughs> choice. <laughs> um, tuxedo versus jeans. Say what? The tuxedo versus jeans. Jeans. Okay. <laughs> Your favorite thing about Richmond? Uh, da, 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 the Richmond Ballet. Oh, that good answer. Um, dream company to create on. Oh, Lord. I don't have one. Okay. <laughs> Again, oh. it's like choosing a child. How can you choose? <laughs> and then um, Kristen Gallagher versus Valerie Tellman. Um, uh, if you both had a daughter, that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you should go with Kristen Gallagher. She's the OG. <laughs> Val, this was so fun. Thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to chat with us today. Um, we miss seeing you over here on the East Coast, and we can't wait to see you again. And we, and we definitely can't wait to see your new world premiere. I'll be back. Thanks. Okay. We love you from the East Coast. Ciao. Yeah. This is Valerie Tillman Henning signing off from another episode of Richmond Ballet in real time. Thanks for joining us again. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Val Canaparoli, be sure to check out valcanaparoli.com, San Francisco Ballet, and Jerome Robbins. Remember, stay home, stay safe, stay positive, and most of all, dance like no one's watching. <laughs>